Yo, what's up, y'all? This is Mario, and right now you're tuned in. You're locked in to the biz with B. Y'all keep it locked right here because we're spending all our Benjamin tonight. You know it. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning back into the biz with you right here on my Christmas radio with your one and only rock star on the mic, Dave Dwayne. We got R&B recording artist Mario on with us. What's going on, man? How you doing, bro, bro? We're doing great. How about yourself? I'm, I'm doing amazing, man. Amazing. 215 has been amazing so far, so looking forward to big things. Absolutely. And we got to say, you know, thanks so much for um, coming on the show. We definitely appreciate you, you know, being available um, so early in the year to talk with us. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. I heard a little bit about your show, so I was excited to come on and uh, chat with you guys. No doubt, no doubt. So uh, we, we got to ask you because the last time you were on the scene, like on a major perspective, when you were with RCA, which was about two, almost two years ago, uh, you had the single with Nikki. Um, great. I love that single. How was it, you know, you know, working with Nikki with that single? It was awesome. Um, we had a, you know, uh, a great uh, creative and artistic approach, both of us on that record. Um, I felt like it was one of those records that was super relatable to everybody, to her fans, to my fans. Um, Polo the Dawn produced it. Um, what attracted me to the record is that, you know, it had a, a elements of, like, real, like, um, you know, throwback music, but, like, bringing it to, uh, you know, bringing it to a more um, newer perspective. You know, and Polo's great with doing that. He just did it again with Nicki's, you know, Anaconda. Like, he's, He's just great with putting together uh, great samples and, you know, making them, you know, bringing them up to date and just making them not. So uh, Nikki came about really through a conversation of wanting to have a female perspective on the record because I felt like I was, you know, giving the male perspective and I felt like putting another female artist that was a singer on it would be, like, typical you know, I wanted to give right. something that was a little bit different. And every time I, I've come out as an artist, I've always wanted to do something that was fresh, that was new, you know. And uh, Nikki was just, I felt like she was just the best choice for it because as a female artist, she's always spoken her mind. I feel like she would give it something that, you know, somebody else wouldn't. So that's how that came about. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And her delivery, I feel like both of you, um, both like delivery from you both with the sound and yeah, the like, concept right. was like really, it was so, it, I was like, I like this. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely, man. It was it was it was a it's a soulful record, you know what I mean? It's a soulful record with like a hip hop vibe to it. And uh, you know, it was a great experiment for me as an artist. I enjoyed it. And um, you know, Nikki Kent came on there and killed it. Everybody did their thing. It was it was a great experience. No doubt. So now when that record came out, um in the video mm-hmm. drop, were you surprised um since it was a different sound for you, were you surprised that it got mm-hmm. a great response? You know, how, how were you feeling at that time? Um, I mean, I wasn't really surprised that it got a great response. I mean, I, 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 I feel like people, you know, that like good music would have liked would like that record, you know. And um, at the time, for me, it was just like I wanted to make something that made me feel good. I wanted to do something that just felt good on radio, that felt good to me you know, that felt good to, uh, you know, um, the fans. You know, I knew people that loved real music would enjoy that record, and I feel like that's the response that it got. Um, And, um, you know, I was actually looking forward to doing more stuff like that with Polo, but a bigger sound, more broader, um, you know, Mm -hmm. or universal. Um, but we never got to that process. But um, it was it was that was that for me was was great. I love that. Record. I love performing it as well. Right. So now, what exactly happened after um, that record? Because a lot of people were like, "Okay, we're ready for Mario's next album. We were ready." And then it was just like, I know, mean, it was close. It, it got to a point where, um, you know, it's like if you're in a long relationship with somebody and y'all outgrow each other. You know, I think that me and the label that I was on for 12 years, we just outgrew each other. And, um, mm-hmm. again, I was ready to, you know, just like anything else in life, you got to learn what's best for you through your experiences. You know, my experience with the label, uh, you know, was just 
an outgrown process, like, later on down the road. You know, when I first started in the game, like, having a record deal was the thing to do is meant everything for your career as a major artist, you know, and when right. technology when technology and create creativity started to fully integrate, um, and I wanted to create music that tugged at the hearts of a broader audience, I pretty much outgrew the label, you know, with my creative vision as a brand and as an artist. And once that happens, you know, it can get very political in the buildings and, you know, because everybody has to keep their jobs. You know how that stuff goes. And I just was like, uh, you know, I was pretty much over the system and being classified as just an urban artist. You know, I wanted to exercise my true potential. And uh, so I negotiated out of my deal, um, which was a pretty much smooth process because most deals, like, you know, Listen, listen, I know a lot of artists that's in their deals for four years and they put a record out. So it's like, you know, it was like, uh, you know, it was a blessing for me to be able to negotiate out of it. I was ready to turn up. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. And you had just, and you just had re-signed since, um, you know, all the Sony brands um, between Arista, LaFace, Nate, and uh, John and all that had just merged into RCI. Yeah, I mean, for me, it wasn't really uh, one of those situations because my same, the same crew I was with, the same team, everybody mm-hmm. from Peter, Peter Edge, who, who I love dearly, you know, who, um, you know, is, you know, still a great friend of mine, and you know, um, he helped me, he signed me to my first deal, but he mm-hmm. pretty much came the chairman of of RCA, so, um, you know, all my situations stayed the same, but. Still, it was a you know process. It was time to move on. Absolutely, and let's talk about like you you know your new venture as a um, independent artist. You know, tell us about the um, the brand that you have um, started. No doubt, no doubt. I mean, the transition has been has been amazing. You know, first of all, the excitement of having a situation where there are no change, there are no you know limits to what you can do you know, as a creative, as a businessman, uh, when you have the freedom to do so. Um, I've been experimenting with my sound and uh, finding the middle ground of where I've been and where I want to go, you know, and um, I've also been able to, along with my manager and my team, to put together a team of self-made, self-made execs to help develop a company that I feel like would create new standards and distribution and, and artist branding worldwide. Um you know, as a businessman, I'm learning a lot about relationships, strategic partnerships, and just business in general. You know, I couldn't be in a better place as far as that goes. But, you know, overall, it's just I feel, I feel like a newborn, you know what I mean, when it comes to an artist. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's my first album again. I feel like it's like the beginning is something that has no limits and that can be a real, true, you know, evolution. Of, of of growth without any fear, right? And that's amazing. And that yeah. honestly is amazing. I, and I feel like it's a it's a good thing that you know you went from being a major artist to independent, and now you're like being able to do like everything that you really have wanted to do, and not allow mm-hmm. yourself to be in the box. Like that's like that's that's the dope thing about you know being. Um, an independent artist, especially with R and B, you get to really have fun with it. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, and a lot of artists that are, a lot of artists that are in labels, you know, um, that are signed to these labels. There's so many, you know, there's a lot of red tape. There's a lot of things that happen in the buildings that I just, as an artist, I couldn't really grasp or seem to understand how that would translate into communicating this art to the fans in a way where it benefited both the label and the artist. Like, it just did because there was sometimes no communication within the label itself. Like, you know, two departments not communicating when a project is time before a project to be released is just absurd, you know. And, you know, we're not going to have that issue. You know, we're creating a system where everybody is strong on their own, and when they come together, it's it's amazing, you know. Um, so yeah, it's very exciting. No doubt. So tell us about the um the new single, um, Fireball, which is absolutely amazing. Spinning all <laughs> our Benjamins tonight. 
the drinking fireball cinnamon and nice. Oh, we're going to turn up with that one, man. It's going to be crazy. Uh, so, basically, fireball, conceptually, you know, it's a real-life experience. It was happening in real time. Uh, it was a night where we were just listening to tracks, having a good time. Um, had my producer, uh, Vi Parker, a.k.a. Vi. He was in there playing beats. We had some people over. We was at the crib chilling. And uh, um, everybody started dancing to this particular beat. And it was the beat for Fireball. And it was like, it just felt like there needed to be a song that went with that moment. Like, it was just one of those, you know, natural moments where everybody was just turning up. And VI came in the studio with this, with a drink. He's like, yo, you got to try this. And uh, I usually, I don't really drink that much or do any drugs when I'm working or whatever. So, um, right. like, period, I don't do any drugs, period. That sounds like I do drugs. Nah, like, but um, when he came in the studio and he, and he gave me his drink, it was Fireball mixed with Angry Orchid. And mm. after I tasted the, the drink, it, it didn't taste like a regular, you know, regular cognac. It had, like, another, like, type of cinnamon fiery vibe to it so it was so good i had to put it in so i just put it in the song like right after this line we had a line that said uh we spending all our benjamins tonight and then i wanted to put in uh we drinking we sip oh yeah we drinking fireball cinnamon tonight right after that so i mean that's pretty much how the name of the record became fireball you know because i felt like it was exciting i felt like it was a part of the turn up and i just felt like you know and then after doing the record for some reason, everywhere I go, people are drinking fireball. It was crazy, you know. So it just was a moment in time, and uh, I felt like it was fun. You know, the record still has elements of, you know, R&B. It feels good, but it's also, you know, a song you can put on, you know, before you go out when you're at the, at the club. Like, it's just all-around great record. And uh, I just felt like... <clears throat> I couldn't do a record like this if I was on RB, or, I mean, RCA or, or signed to a label because their perception of it would be that, you know, it's not R&B or it's not, you know, a dark contemporary or whatever the case may be, wow. you know. And for me, it's like, yo, creative creativity is about being well-rounded to me. You know, uh, being a creative artist is about being re- well-rounded. You know, um, when you have as much versatility as I have, you know, and it's something that I've learned about myself. It's like, you can't put chains on that. You got to get all your creativity out and then pull it back and put the records that you feel like fit on the project. You know what I mean? And that's what it's about. It's not about going out, having one person pick all your records for you and then you record every day. You know, then you have a project that doesn't sound organic. Mm-hmm. You know? But nah, that's how that came about, man. So I can't wait for the people to to feel that. Yeah, definitely, because that's a high rocking. And I heard that I was like, yo, this is like straight, it's straight turn up. It <laughs> feels good. It feels right. Because like I was telling you before we got started, I'm an artist as well. So for me, mm. um, in that creative process, most importantly, that that beat has to feel right, and I've got to mm-hmm. feel so. Good, cause it just it just has to match my fa- my fly. I was gonna say fancy, but my fly mm-hmm. is even better. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. <clears throat> now with this um record, are you gonna? Um, I would imagine you're gonna shoot a video, right? Yeah, we're we're actually uh, finishing up the concept for the video right now. It's crazy. Um, I can't give you any details just yet on it because we still like really locking it down. But it's gonna be a movie. And it's going to be, you know, something I've never done before. Dope. Something my fans have never experienced. Yeah. And you just mentioned movies. Sorry to cut you off. How do you feel about, like, now we see, you know, just in music in general, we see, like, the short films, you know, attached, like, going along with music. And I feel like we see it a lot more with, like, R&B when and it's, like, very conceptual. How do you um feel about that? I think it's great. Um, I just, you know, I don't, I'm not biased to any, you know, particular way or I'm biased. You know, I just, I like all creativity. I get inspired by, you know, things that people may not like as much or things that people love. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, I, I, when I see something, I can look at it and understand it from the, the, 
that artist's point of view. So I enjoy it all, bro. You know what I mean? I, I just enjoy being inspired by different creatives um, and uh, from different genres of music and artists and furniture and art. And, all, you know, I'm, I'm inspired by so much, and I think that <clears throat> this project and what I do with the visuals for this project will show, like, you know, it'll show where, you know, where some of my inspiration comes from, you know, and how versatile I've been as an artist, but it kind of, I just, I've never gotten the opportunity to show it. So I think it's great that these, uh, that these outlets and these artists are taking these, 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 these type of perspectives on music and videos. Sure. So let's, um, you know, kind of push music to the side real quick, and let's talk about um, your brand and imaging. Mm -hmm. the, um, with, uh, you know, you coming back out as an independent artist, you bringing yourself with the Oh Yes Mario, the, the t like, the imaging is great. Like, we're a fan of, like, your social media. Like, I literally sit there, and I'm like, Thank you, bro. Just, I'm like, yo, this is how artists need to package their social media. For you um, to come back out, was it hard to, like, rebrand yourself? I mean, no, nah, it, wasn't, it wasn't really hard. I mean, I have a, an amazing team, man. Like, I can't even I, – I have an amazing team. I love my team. We, you know, we do things like family. We do things like, you know, very just it, – it's so different from, from a label. You know, it's like there is no – it's not like – it, it was so corny the way labels would do it. You know, it's like, with us, it's more like in the moment. It's like, what do we feel like? Who who are you really? You know, what are you really like? What are you really feeling like? These things, we sit down and really, you know, allow it to feel natural. You know, we, we come up with song ideas wherever we are, in the living room, you know, in the studio, in the car, wherever. It's like it's more of a natural process, so the music feels more more like that. The visuals feel more like that. The whole white thing came about, like, because I just felt like it was a new beginning, and mm -hmm. I felt like I wanted to give my fans something that was uh, to express these moments, to express how it felt, to express how it felt to be free, to express how it felt to be, you know, uh, start fresh as if this was like a new you know, a completely new book, not even a new chapter, but a completely new book, you know what I mean? So I wanted to give off that feeling, and that's what the right represents. And, uh, you know, from here, we're just going to continue to take it, you know, as as we continue to put out music, we'll, we'll continue to keep the evolution very, uh, you know, very real, very honest, very, you know, very creative, but still matching, you know, what we're doing, very cohesive. It's like... <clears throat> It's actually much easier when you, uh, when it's coming from a real place, you know, when it's coming from a real place and you're growing on the ground. Like, I, I feel like it's important to do things. If I could have had it my way with RCA, I would have did it with my, my inner team, like my close team, and then presented everything to them and told them, like, yo, this is what we're going to do, you know, but that wasn't what happened. And now I feel like I have that all the way around the board. So that's what, that's what people want to see. Right. And going along with that, do you feel like labels are afraid to try to go with, you know, the artist's direction sometimes? That's why they, you know, they'll say like, no, we can't do that. This is where we want you. Um, yeah, I think that they, I think that they're afraid in general. And I think that, you know, you have some people who are execs who aren't really creative people who are telling creative people what to do. And there's a, a huge clash. And at some point, you know, you just kind of get, at the end of the day, they're spending the money. Do you know what I mean? And, right, you know, they make the decisions they want to make. And, uh, you know, hopefully if you have a good team, you know, I think the team is important it's like maybe for the labor team is important to me, you know, because um, you'll still get the same thing done 
with the label as far as them spending their money, but you may not get the same product. You may not get the same creativity. You may not get the same outcome if you don't have a great team. So, right. you know, I think it starts with the team. Got to have that team right. Yep. And that's what I tell people all the time. Like, if you don't have a good team that's behind you and they're not for you, then you're not going to succeed because you have people, you have bad apples behind you. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I told them, I, I even have told that to artists that have been signed to major labels and they don't get it. I'm just like, hey, to each their own. If you don't want to listen, guess what? I, I, I can't be involved. I can't talk to you. <laughs> like, you got to get it together. Absolutely, man. I mean, to my fans, I think that this is going to be um, – this is gonna be amazing, you know, rides for 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 us both, and um, I think it's also gonna show artists that when you have a team, when you know what you want, and when you're not afraid to grow, and you know, step out of your comfort zone to a, to a degree, because a lot of the music that I'm doing is not completely in my comfort zone, but it is how I see myself and it's how I feel. So, you know, I think that. It's going to show artists that when you do that, you know, and you with a, a, a company and a label that believes in you and is able to express and communicate your gift worldwide, there's nothing that you can't do, you know, nothing that you can't do. Right. And you, um, you got, you're going to be going on a promo tour uh, with mm-hmm. a single, right? This. This starts um, with the Grammys, right? We start on the yeah. We start uh, right after the Grammys. Um, I don't have the list of dates. Malone, do you have the list of dates? I don't have the list of dates in front of me, but we uh, I think we start in Boston and um, okay. Flint. Then we go to yeah, Boston, Flint. I just posted them on my IG. Go to that. Oh yes, Mario. Bam, you gonna see mm-hmm. the dates right there. We posted them up right. But, um, yeah, man, the tour the tour is gonna to be turned up. It's gonna be crazy. Um, we have uh, Fireball on board as well. You know, they they heard the record and uh, wow, after we did it. You know, we just sent it to them for fun, like yo, you know, whatever. And uh, they loved it, and they're on board as well. So it's gonna be fun, man. It's gonna be fun, like just touching the fans, being in the cities, you know, really getting out and performing the record, letting them feel it. And then from there, we got a slew of amazing music coming out. So it's just the beginning. Right. Now, are you going to um, – oh, go ahead. I said I think we're going to be one of the first places in Minneapolis as well. So nice. those are the first three. Yep. So now, um, are you going to keep some of that same material that you were working on for um, your album, for this new project now? How are you going to um, work that out? Nah, it's a whole new vibe. So it's like keeping that material, like, it, it, nah, like, nah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to keep any of it, actually. None of it. It's a whole new vibe. It's a whole new, we're still, we're still working on this project. We're still creating amazing music. Everything that we're creating is all original. So it's, um, yeah, it's a completely different vibe. It's a completely different, uh, it's a completely different process. You know, mm-hmm. we, I'm not going to expensive studios spending $3,000 a night on sessions and doing, I'm not doing all of that. I'm doing, I'm creating at the creative. I'm creating, sometimes I work at studios, but I'm creating very organically, you know, because that process is not, you know, it's not smart, nor is it, it's not really purposeful for me anymore. Right. You know what I mean? Where I would be like, all right, cool, let's book. Let's book out a studio in Miami for three weeks. Let's book out a studio. Nah, like, I got my own studio. And, you know, it's just a smarter, funner, more real, organic process. You know, I still enjoy going to those studios. Like, maybe like when we put strings on record, we just recently put strings on one of my records. We just recently did. But other than that, it almost feel more natural for me to create in a more comfortable environment. You know what I mean? So those type of things I've never really done before. So it's like it's make it's giving the music a different feeling. 
different vibe. Definitely. Well, we're excited, Mario. I mean, you've always come out with great music, and you're consistent, and you're just, you, you still are. So, I mean, listen, you got our full support. Whatever you need from us. Just let us know and, and keep and, and definitely keep me posted when you're in New York and Philly. I know that's probably like dates that will be your, your team is probably working on to have added soon. But you know, just keep us posted on that. We'll definitely come out. No well, doubt, man. <clears throat> and uh, I appreciate you. Appreciate that. So, Marla, before we have you um do a drop for us, tell everybody where you can. What well. well you know where to check you out. <laughs> Tell them where they can find Oh, no, nah, for um, sure, man. You already know we on that gram heavy. Uh, oh, yes, Mario. It's my Instagram. Um, Facebook, facebook.com backslash Mario. And um, we will have the site, a new site up soon. But, um, you know, those are the two primary ones that where you can get in touch with me and just, you know, keep up with what's going on. And I will be in the city near you. So y'all stay tuned as well. 